Hi, and welcome to this introductory demo of the IBM Zert Network Analyzer. This is a new ZOSMF plugin that allows ZOS network security administrators to easily query and analyze the cryptographic protection attributes of their ZOS, TCP IP, and Enterprise Extender connections. This demo will provide a brief overview of the Zert Network Analyzer's primary functions, and in future demos, we'll dive a little deeper into some of those functions. Just as a quick overview, the Zert Network Analyzer is a ZOSMF plugin that ingests SMF Type 119 Subtype 12 Zert summary records, stores the data in a DB2 for ZOS database, and provides an easy to use graphical user interface through which ZOS network security administrators can create and execute queries for the specific cryptographic protection attributes they need to examine. Before starting this demo, I collected some Zert summary records and dumped them into a few different data sets using the SMF dump program. Those data sets are accessible to the user ID under which ZOSMF is running. So let's take a quick look at the network analyzer. Here's a ZOSMF login page. I'll go ahead and enter my user ID and password. And if I wanted to use the new desktop interface, I would click this checkbox here, but I'll just go ahead and use the traditional interface to log in. The first thing you'll notice is the new analysis category in the left-hand navigation pane. This is where the link for the Zert Network Analyzer is. So I'll click on that to start the Network Analyzer, and I'll collapse the navigation pane to get a little more space to work with. This is the Network Analyzer's welcome page with links to various common tasks and a nice tutorial we provided for new users. Across the top of the page, you'll see four tabs for the four main functions. The Data Management tab is where you go to import SMF data into the Network Analyzer's database or to trim old data out of it. The Queries tab is where you go to create, edit, and run queries against the Network Analyzer database. The Report tab is where the query results are displayed and examined. Note that the query results can also be exported to comma-separated value files. Finally, the Settings tab is where you go to set a small number of operational parameters as well as the database connectivity information. On the top right, you'll also notice a Help icon. Click on this icon at any time to bring up the IBM Knowledge Center topic for whatever Network Analyzer page is currently showing. So let's take a closer look at a couple of the main tabs. So let's look at the Data Management tab first. Most of the Zert Network Analyzer main tabs are further broken into sub-tabs as shown here. For Data Management, the Import SMF Data sub-tab is where you define the SMF dump data sets to import and where you execute the import operations. The Data Management History tab shows you the last 100 import or database prune operations and the results. The Manage Database sub-tab provides a current database summary and the ability to prune out old data that is no longer needed. Note that most of the Network Analyzer panels also provide embedded assistance under this little informational icon. The embedded assistance provides quick reference information regarding the current panel as shown here. Now let's take a look at the Queries tab. When you first go into the Queries tab, there's a single sub-tab called Manage Queries. Here you see that there's a list of all the queries that Zert Network Analyzer users have created and saved. In our case, there's six existing queries. From this view, you can run a query so the results go to the report view, run a query and export the results directly to a comma-separated value file, edit a query, or delete a query. At the top of the page, there's a New Query button which is what you would click to build a new query from scratch. So let's have a closer look at one of these queries. If you click on any of the rows in the Manage Queries view, it expands to show you the specific query criteria. A Network Analyzer query has two categories of filters. Scope filters, which define the range of systems, endpoints, and dates over which to query, and security filters, which specify the specific cryptographic protection attributes to query. A query may have scope filters, security filters, or both types. If a query doesn't have any type of filter, it will return all the data in the database. An example of a query with both types of filters is this batch 7 workload query. Here we see two scope filters, one for traffic inbound to a system named Germany in a sysplex called Plex1 
from a client at 10.11.123.2, and another for any outbound traffic from the same Germany system to TCP server ports 8080 or 25 on any foreign server. We also have a single security filter for IPsec sessions that use DES or triple DES encryption. Now let's look at another query that many users might be interested in. This one shows the use of weak TLS protocol versions. You see that this query does not specify any scope filters since we're interested in finding any use of these weak protocol versions. The security filter specifies those versions. Uh oh, wait a second. We wanted to include TLS version 1.0 in this query, but you can see that it's missing from the security filter, so we can fix that now. I'll click on Edit Query to make the change. Now I'll go to my security filters, and I'm going to select TLS 1.0. Now I can either save the query and then run it later, or I can save it and run it right away. I think that's what I'll do now. I'll hit confirm to kick the query off, and now you can see that the report is active. I'll go there while the, the report is loading, and here we have the results. Once the query completes, the results are shown in tabular form, starting with a summary view into which you can drill down for more and more detail. There are three perspectives, each under its own subtab. In this case, all three perspectives show information only for the servers and clients that use TLS sessions with SSL version 2, SSL version 3, or TLS version 1.0, as specified in the query. The three perspectives are the TCP server traffic view, where each row represents a unique server on one of our ZOS systems that is accepting inbound connections. The TCP client traffic view, where each row represents a unique foreign server, that's one to which our local ZOS system is connecting outbound, and an enterprise extender view, which uses a peer-to-peer -peer model. Since TLS can't be used for enterprise extender traffic, this view is empty. So let's go back to the TCP server traffic view and look at more details. By default, the TCP server summary view shows the ZOS system information, the server's IP address and port, and the user ID and job name that the server was running under, as well as several totals, one for each cryptographic protocol that ZERT understands, and one for connections that did not have any cryptographic protection that ZERT recognized. Since we did a TLS-specific query, the only column with non-zero connection counts is TLS in this case. Now let's dig a little deeper into our TCP server view. We'll pick a ZOS server on 10.11.201.3, port 925. Clicking on the server row expands it to show all the different clients that connected to that server using one of these weak pr protocol versions. Here we see that there were three such clients, along with their IP addresses and the total number of connections per client. Now let's select one or more of the clients. We'll just select them all, and then we'll click on the View Security Session Details button over on the right to drill down to all the cryptographic detail. Now we see the various cryptographic attributes that were used to protect the TCP connections between each of the clients and server. The second drop down here on the left lets you select between a number of different um, types of attributes. The cryptographic details, like protocol version and algorithms. Certificate details, such as the signature algorithms and asymmetric key lengths. The distinguished name details, with the subject and issue or distinguished names for any of the server or client and entity certificates that were used during the handshake. And traffic details which shows the total number of connections and the amount of data protected be between each client and server. So there you have it, a very quick tour of the IBM Zert Network Analyzer. With a network analyzer, ZOS Network Security Administrators can easily assess their ZOS network protection posture and identify the areas that need attention. I hope you enjoyed the tour and keep an eye on this channel for more videos that dive deeper into some of the features you've seen here today. Until then, keep your ZOS network traffic safe.